Congestion's growing. The nature of the beast is you can't really avoid congestion per se. No longer a city where it's easy to get around in 20 minutes like we did when we were growing up. If your journey to work seems to be getting slower, it probably is. There have never been more cars on Perth roads. And with massive infrastructure projects in full swing, congestion is at an all-time high. The peak hour start times, I think, have changed. It starts earlier, it ends later. Good morning, everyone. Bernie with another check of the traffic and the Mitchell Freeway quite busy. When it comes to our traffic troubles, Sunrise reporter Bernie D has had a front row seat for 15 years. I'll have more traffic for you soon on Sunrise. I remember when I used to say peak hour was around the seven-ish mark. I could easily say it's well before six now. The morning crush starts before six. The run home is getting later and longer. I mean, it dissipates quite quickly, but it's still a lot of cars at, what, what 10 years ago, maybe 5, 5.30, now easily 6.30, 7 o'clock. That means peak hour can be six or seven hours every day. We set up a time-lapse camera on the Mount Street overpass in the city. And yes, from 4 to 7 p.m., the freeway was chock-a-block. It's not just the you know, centralisation of Mitchell Freeway, Quinana Freeway coming into the city. There's a lot of little hubs in and around the metro area that are really busy now. WA's population of people and cars is growing faster than any other state. In 2005, there were 1.8 million registered vehicles. By 2010, there were 2.3 million. Now we've reached 2.8 million registered vehicles with 1.9 million people. In the last 12 months, we've seen in, um, car registrations in Western Australia have increased by 4.6%, which is the highest of any state in Australia. So what does all this congestion do to poor old drivers? I think I'm a really calm driver. Cameraman Craig Shaw wore a heart rate and blood pressure monitor on the run to work. I don't think it's going to go up much at all. We'll see how that works out in a moment, but let's get a bird's eye view of the morning rush. It's now just after 8am and I know I'd much rather be up here than down there. On the Quinana Freeway, traffic's at a standstill from the Mount Henry Bridge to Canning Highway. On the Mitchell Freeway, it's busiest around Cedric Street and Osborne Park. With our freeways becoming car parks, more drivers are taking alternative routes and clogging up the suburbs. So they're taking like maybe Stirling Highway, Canning Highway, Orong Road, but out in the east, the northeast, it's West Swan Road and Great Northern Highway. That is a little hot spot. These pictures were taken at 7.30am on Wanneroo Road, just north of Burns Beach Road, 35 kilometres from the city. It's going to be a long trip to work. We've got 250 cameras across our network. Um, we've got additional 50 cameras in the tunnel related to that, so 300, more than 300 overall. Over at the Main Roads Traffic Operations Centre, John Venables says crashes are their worst nightmare. We can call tow trucks, we can send emergency services, so we can get the right people out there very quickly and try and resolve the situation as quickly as we can. We're doing a lot uh, at this point in time to try and ease congestion, but I would admit that um, the first part of this century we didn't do enough. Transport Minister Dean Nalder says the billion dollar gateway project near Perth Airport will have a huge impact when it's finished in two years. Mitchell Freeway will be extended north to Hester Avenue within three years and Tonkin Highway will reach Ellenbrook and beyond within four years. And that's to get freight and get trucks off the roads and out of the city. That in itself will make huge improvements to West Swan Road, uh, to Great Northern Highway, uh, to Lord Street. Traffic congestion has a big impact on the way we work. Over 80% of businesses reported that congestion was having a negative impact on their productivity. According to a survey by the Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the RAC, 80% of people say congestion has added at least 10 hours a week to their time on the road. 70% of businesses say punctuality is getting worse, stress levels and sick days are going up. CCI boss Deidre Wilmot. People are sometimes leaving jobs because they can find a job closer to home and they've got less travel time and expense involved. Let's check in on cameraman Craig, whose drive to work takes up to an hour. Well, I live up north and I think the traffic's doubled in the last four or five years I've lived up there. 
Early on, Craig's blood pressure falls from 110 over 75 to 105 over 52. As the traffic gets worse, it jumps to 116 over 71, then 128 over 70. A big rise, but fortunately still in the healthy range. Your blood pressure has risen quite a lot. It's quite surprising because I didn't feel like it had risen at all. His heart rate rose too from 69 beats per minute to 88. So do you still think you're a pretty relaxed driver? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hit anyone. <laughs> so what's the solution? Carpooling and using public transport help, but some businesses are even staggering work hours. I would advocate good bosses to know that if the nature of the business allows people to start earlier, finish later, that would be the first thing, I think, to help in congestion. Yes, and we would encourage that where it's possible. There'll be a trial soon allowing drivers to turn left on red lights, just like they can in Sydney. There are new bus lanes, apps for your phone, all designed to make our journey smoother. For a city that is transforming, which is exciting, but has its challenges, we're working on ways to make it uh, easier for people to move about.